<laughs> All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio, the show about amateur radio or ham radio with an emphasis on digital or data modes, moving information back and forth using amateur radio, trying to reimagine radio in the information age. Hey, we're going to talk about APRS web chat. We're going to make APRS texting really easy to do with APRS web chat. Let's talk about that today, this time on KM6 LYW Radio. Yeah. All right, yeah, this is kind of name that tune. So, hey, welcome back, you know, if, if this is your first thing. That's the bumper music. I can't afford real bumper music, so we do the best we can with what we have. All right, let's talk about APRS web chat. Um, if you have an APRS-enabled radio, you, you can already send messages to other radios um, uh, via, uh, you know, over RF radio to radio or through eye gates and a combination of digipeters and the inter internet. You can send a message to any radio all over the world. It's kind of like the whole texting side of radios. A lot of people think APRS chat is just for sending, like, beacons, GPS positions, you know, to the internet. It's not. I mean, that's that's part of it. It's really about two-way texting, but it's always been traditionally hard to send someone a text message using these 10 keys on these radios, right? So with the uh, addition of a Raspberry Pi and hook that up to your radio and something called APRSD web chat, um, we can actually do APRS texting with a web browser or with our phones uh, over Wi-Fi. Um, so ultimately all you need, uh, there's two ways to do this. One, you can install APRSD web chat um, using from GitHub, if you're like a hacker, you don't have to be a hacker, it's not that hard. It's really just uh, once you get a Raspberry Pi hooked up to your radio, you, you do pip install APRSD, and then you're going to run APRSD uh, sample config and put that out to a configuration file, and then just run APRSD space web chat. That's it. Um, so this is if, if you want to build this yourself. If you don't want to build this yourself and you're a patron of the channel, this is already integrated and all this stuff is done um, on the DigiPi SD card image. And that goes to everyone, uh, all the patrons of the channel here. So all of the, and this is the DigiPi uh, web interface here. Um, so if you go out to digipi.org, you can download this SD card image. You can put it in your Raspberry Pi. It'll give you access to all the data modes, including web chat. And, and it just makes it super duper easy. Um, we're talking about FTA, WSJTX, slow scan, JS8 call, all the APRS, AX.25 packet modes. And then now the newest thing is APRS web chat. So looking over here, when you first fire up your Digipi, you're going to see all of your services. And I just clicked on DigiPi. Actually, wait, APRS web chat's already running. I clicked on here. So see how it's green. And of course, the TNC is running as well because it needs a, a packet TNC running in the background to talk to. Um, and that's really what drives uh, the packets from the Raspberry Pi through the USB cable to this mm, overpriced ICOM 705. So all the USB uh, cat control, push to talk, audio is all happening over that single USB cable. You can do this with dual banders as well, but you're going to need an audio card and a push to talk circuit. But you can do all that uh, if you if you go out to digipi.org. We've got schematics for that if you want to build a digipi. In fact, they're here somewhere. There's a couple of them. It's not too hard. Real basic soldering. All right, so that's the DigiPi stuff. Um, let's do the web chat. That's what we're here to do. So web chat's already running. I would have clicked on here. Then down here, there's a launch link called web chat. And when I click on this, it's going to connect my web browser over Wi-Fi. And this could be on your phone. It's going to connect to this DigiPi, Raspberry Pi, which is connected to the radio. And it's basically saying to call a sign. This could be anybody. This could be like, I always use the example of a WX bot. And you can give it like your zip code, 95. Actually, you know what we should do before we even do this? Let's send our position just so the APRS system knows where I'm at. So you might notice over here, this radio just transmitted. You can see my call sign is on that little screen. Um, so we know the packet got uh, back out and in. Um, so the APRS uh, messaging system needs to know where you are. So it knows which digipeters and eye gates to light up on RF in your area. So it's kind of like helps it route. So that's why that GPS sending your position is important. So after that, we can just start sending messages like crazy. So the one that's real popular is WXBot. This one will give you the weather if you give it your zip code. I think it'll use your location as well of, of that beacon. So let's say 95614. And I'm going to say send. 
And you'll see over here, KM6LYW just sent the message of the zip code 95614. You'll notice there's a little green hand over here. They just went from a thumbs down to a thumbs up. So the thumbs up means the APRS uh, remote radio got my message and sent an acknowledgement back. We've got the whole APRS protocol implemented in here with acknowledgements, resends, uh, act packets. And then you'll notice WX bot replied. It says five miles east of Auburn, California this afternoon. It's sunny and with the high of 75. So it totally worked. We sent a message message out to a virtual radio and there are a lot of virtual radios we can talk to as well as real people so I, mean, I got a few of them here another practical thing um, that we put together is uh, called the repeat radio it's a virtual radio we can say the nearest give me the nearest two repeaters so I'll just say n space two we make the messages short because you know it's hard it's hard to type on these radios and I get that but it's easy to type on APRS web chat so let me send that message and it's going to open up a new chat with the repeat virtual radio with N2, and I already got one repeater back, W6YDD, yeah, that's close, that's five miles. Another one is 7.6 miles, W6EK, the club repeater. Right on, guys. Um, so I'm, I'm having these conversations with other radios. These are virtual radios, but I've got the uh, the XYL's radio here uh, as well, KN6JYI. So we're going to see if we can send her a message using nothing more than this uh, web chat interface on the DigiPi that's talking to this ICOM 705. So her radio is currently tuned to 14439. I don't know if you, you guys, how well can you see that? I guess the glare is unbearable. So there's other messages coming through. And, and if you get a repeat packet, that's cool. It'll blink um, a lot of times. And that way, you know, you're getting repeats that are bouncing around. And we had to filter those repeats a little bit. But yeah, this looks like it actually, if you hover over each one of the packets, you can see the raw packet data and the message numbers there. Yeah, and these are all unique. We're making sure we're filtering out the unique packet, uh, filtering out the duplicates. All right, so let's see if we can send a message to the XYL's radio. This is going to be kn 6 Get type it right, J-Y-I, and I'm gonna say, hey, this is a test from web chat to your radio. And we're gonna hit send, and as soon as we do this, this is actually gonna go nuts. I'm gonna see if I can line this up in advance. All right, let me hit send, and we'll see what happens on the radio here. Send. There it is. And we can say, hey, this is a test from web chat to your radio. And of course, uh, my radio, XYL's radio sent an act packet out and the little, uh, the little thumbs up popped up there. So we know this radio got it. And we could be anywhere in the world doing this. I mean, yeah, we're in the shack right now. But let me see. Let me take the Weiss radio with, with my glasses here. Let me see if I can reply. Um, let me see if I can reply to that somehow. Uh, let's say APRS test message over RF. I've actually already got that queued up. So I'm going to send this message. APRS message over RF. I'm sending it now. There it goes. And you can see immediately it popped up on the APRS web chat over there. So we've got two-way messaging. Um, we did it all over RF here. And in fact, we did it all over RF on the, uh, the server side as well. If you wanted to, you could hook this up to the information server. You can do that with APRSD as well, but you know, it's not as cool. So all the endpoints were, were our RF here. It's a lot of fun. So this makes APRS messaging easy. Until now, it's been a pain. You know, you've either had to use like APRS Droid maybe on your phone. Um, see, we've, we've got all that stuff right here on our, our phone too. This is what it looks like on the phone. This took a lot of effort to get the styles working and whatnot. Um, so you could use APRS Droid with your phone and talk to your Raspberry Pi and do it that way. You know, it's a little awkward, but this, you can work with any web browser, any Wi-Fi device. Um, it's just really easy to do chatting. There's no excuse not to do APRS texting and APRS uh, web chat, especially if you got the DigiPi, but you can certainly install this yourself. All right, so I don't know if, if you want to see any more examples here. There's a lot of virtual radios we could talk to, but I think you guys get the gist of this. It makes texting really easy. Hey, I've got to thank WB4BOR. He's the guy that really took the APRS D project. Um, that's this thing. And in fact, he did all these graphics and stuff too. This is Walt. Walt, thank you so much for put for working on the APRS D project. Uh, web chat has been something that I really wanted to implement ever since I started APRSD. I mean, APRSD will implement virtual radios and do email and things like that, but the web chat stuff is brand new and it's part of the DigiPi. And of course, if you go to github.com slash Krager L, I, don't, I know you guys can't read that. Um, there's going to be an APRSD. Um, you can just search GitHub for APRSD, I suppose, and you'll, you'll find it. It's for, I don't know, it has my name on it. It's the best way to find it.
<laughs> and you can get APRS, uh, or APRSD, which is the APRS daemon, and of course it implements web chat. All right, so we wouldn't be chatting with anybody here at all if it wasn't for the patrons of this channel. Thank you guys. So Steve, NW2, Fu, Andrew, Brian, Chris, Jake, Ryan, Jim, Malcolm, Brad, Thomas, Paul, Buddy, Brown. Um, if you go to patreon.com slash km6lyw, you get that SD card image, which has S web chat built into it, and it'll, you just put the you burn the card, put it in your pie, boot it up, click initialize. It'll ask you for your call sign and whatnot, and, uh, and then start the web chat service. It'll start the TNC automatically. Um, and then start chatting with APRS, with anyone in the world. Anyone in the world, as long as they're, you know, some internet and some RF between them. <laughs> All right, thank you, guys. Hey, I'm going to scroll through these quick. There are so many of you. Um, this is really humbling to see how many people have come through on Patreon in support of this. So these, everyone here has access to the DigiPi image. This is really overwhelming. George, BB, Christian, Jeremy. Um, I try and update this as fast as I can. You guys, we're talking on email all the time. We've got a Discord channel. We've got a Google group. Um, everybody's really excited about the data modes and amateur radio. I mean, I think we're really taking this into the information age, getting kids involved too, right? When was the last time you saw a kid talking on the phone? All right, guys. Hey, this has been uh, APRSD's implementation of APRS web chat, and we did it on the DigiPi here. Um, hey, my name is KM. My name is Craig. <laughs> Call sign KM6. L-Y-W, and I'm in California, and I'm clear.